Uh, so, Barry, I'm going to uh, jump straight across you to Eddie Hearn. Eddie, how the devil are you? This is some setup. Oh, uh, you don't do things by half measures. I don't really know why I'm surprised. Well, it's been so painful, the whole, whole process. And when I was on the plane, I started looking around and people look really happy. One's probably to be getting out and away, but also what an experience. I mean, you know, this is the kind of things you remember. It's been amazing doing the bubbles at Wembley, but this is something you should remember, anyone on this trip, especially if you fight on this car, that you'll remember for your whole life and your career. So amazing. I mean, look at that backdrop there. The weather's beautiful. You've got the drone over there. I've just seen that. Look, I mean, you know, and I think we always want to make statements around the world. And this is, you know, people will probably will be watching going, what on earth are they doing over there? But that's what we want. So, and ultimately, actually, Dillian wanted a crowd that really that's the reason we're here because this is one of the few places where literally the entire population is vaccinated and he said i need i need to be you know up for this i need to feel the energy i must win this fight when the when the travel restrictions came in i said you've got to come back to the uk or you've got to go to Spain and break camp. He said, I can't break camp. It's just too much on the line. You know, so it's worked out great. We'll see if it works out great on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, set it up for us. Just how much is riding on it for Dillian? A huge amount. Yeah, I mean, Sky changed my quote a little bit where I said it could be, if he loses, it could be the end of his world title ambitions. And Sky said, if he loses, it's the end of his world title ambitions. doesn't sound like No, but, no, but to be honest, to be honest, like, um, I don't think... I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it, that if he was to lose Dillian on Saturday night, the chances of fighting for the world title in the next two years are just have completely evaporated. I mean, Povetkin looks so comfortable. I mean, actually, when you think about it, I thought Povetkin today was going to chin me because he's turned up, he's flown in from Russia to London, they've picked him up from the airport, taken him to the hotel, he's done his COVID test, he's gone to his room. Early the next morning, they've taken him to the airport again. Two hours that he got stuck in traffic. And then he had, they had to queue up in the car park because there was only one one check-in stand open. And you were there, Barry, you know. And he's probably, I'm thinking, I went, hi, Alex, how are you? And he's probably thinking, this is a stitch-up. It's not. It's the way we had to do it. Everybody's but he was in chilled. It, yeah. He was chilled I completely. Think I, I don't think nothing faced No, he didn't. No, and I, I think they, 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 listen, why shouldn't he be confident? He just won the last fight by, by a devastating knockout. We know he was over twice. I watched the fight back last night. They were flash knockdowns, yes. you know, but he was getting hurt a little bit too easy for my liking, but they were still flash knockdowns. He'll be thinking, well, my one weren't a flash knockdown, no. that's for sure. But I think they're right. I think they, I think they, were, they were good shots, but I don't think he was as hurt as we thought, because no, no. we all got excited. Yeah. And, and, and it, it looked like Dillian was finishing yeah. it, to yeah. be honest. I just think that Dillian was, was comfortable with him close. I keep saying it, but it's true. He was comfortable with him close because he was having success with Povetkin close. Yeah. But you can't have this man close to you. No. I don't think that's And you all. know, the problem is as well, is Dillian's got it in his head going into this fight. I must be ruthless. I must be brutal. I must be this. So when he gets him hurt, yeah. he will jump all over him, which, by the way, is also dangerous. I you think know, I mean, what do you... The, this, is, this is the problem for Dillian in this fight where he's coming up against such a seasoned fighter yeah. in Povetkin. It's not a guy... People sometimes don't realise Dillian's background. You know, he was a kickboxer. He, in his early part of his career, he was paying himself to get on small hall yeah, sure. shows just to get a chance. And he's a guy, very few fighters get to elite world championship level with that kind of background. So he's always playing catch up to the fighters with great pedigree. And that's a fighter, Alexander Povetkin, with great pedigree. So it's not, you can't just say, I'm going to go in there and when I get in there, I'm going to jump all over him. No, because that's why Alexander Povetkin is thinking that's actually going to suit me down to the Suits ground. Me, yeah. You're going to make a mistake, and I'm going to make you pay. Well, he's dangerous until he's out. Isn't oh he? yeah, he's literally. Yeah. I, th I think I think what's important for Dillian is that he is is discipline. It's the one thing that he doesn't have. To be fair, very rarely. Yeah. But I think Harold Knight will help that. Yeah, dramatically. I can't see this fight going 12 rounds. I don't know no, about no, you, no, but no, like, I can't, no. you know, because I think and and it, I think it could go inside six rounds because, like I said, Dillian's got it in his head that I have to be like the old Dillian White. When I've got someone hurt, I finish him. Agree in a little way, but I don't think there's a lot more he could have done last time because, you know, it's, it's great looking back after the fact and saying, yes, should have done yeah. this. But hold on, you knocked him down twice. If you would have stopped him that round, it would have been a perfect punch, perfect performance. Yes. All of a sudden, you made a mistake by not finishing him. I don't think you made a mistake. I just think, I think he was, that, he was, he was doing well with him close. He was doing so well with him close. And, that, and, that, and that's, of course, that's why, that's why, you just keep, you know, that's why he wanted him close. He's, he's blocking and countering. But I think ultimately, from the very beginning, as we spoke before the first fight, for the captain at the end of that long jab, I still think I think the outcome would have been, he might have still knocked him down twice, but he wouldn't have got caught himself. 
Eddie's just jumped on uh, with our colleagues on Sky Sports News. I want to ask you this. Going into the fight, Dylan White didn't have to fight Alexander Povetkin. He could have sat on his mandatory position yeah. with the WBC. Didn't have to take any risks. Actually, I think a lot of people say, you know, fair play to you. All the credit to you for wanting to stay busy, wanting to gain more experience. You know, in terms of the fights that he's had over his uh, career, still had limited amateur experience and, and, and you know, is learning on the job. I just wonder now how, if that plays on anybody's mind at all, the fact that, you know, that's life. You can't live with regrets. But, but you know, you can write yourself up in cotton wool, can you? Wait no, for the big no, opportunity no. to come. I think, I, I think, no, you have to keep, you have to keep busy. He wants to fight, to be fair to him. I know a lot of people say it, but I think he genuinely does want to fight people. You know, he wants to fight quality quality opponents. And also, he wants to get paid. You know, he's just sat at home, not, you know, not earning no money. You know, why, why wouldn't you? The opportunity comes along and it's it's a good payday for you. Against it, and, let's be, and let's be honest, let's go back to what, what we all thought before the first fight. Against a really good fighter in Pebeck, who's been world, world champion, Olympic gold medalist, and who's been a fantastic operator. but. He's not the same fight that he was 10 years ago, 8 years ago, 5 years ago. You know, he has slowed a bit. What but, but still dangerous. And we still, we sort of said he still needs to be dangerous. But we were literally trying to build it up. So when Dillian finishes it, we start like, oh, he bucks an old man and beat him up. Yeah. Like, you know, but, but it's different, isn't it? Because we know that he can hurt him. You know, it's not like we're trying yeah. to say something that hasn't already happened. You know, yeah, Dillian, course, yeah. White, Dillian White was knocked cold by Alexander Povetkin. Oh, yeah, and, it's, and it wasn't, there was nothing, he was out before he hit the floor. It was, it was a, as devastating a knock as you'll find anywhere, to be honest, it was, it was ruthless. And you know, and that can work, and the you know, thing is, did you think, I was winning the fight, it was in, I had it in the bag, and then, you know, and then he just catched me with a good shot, and he, did, and he put me over. That, that can be, that can move two ways for you. And, you know, you're just, I know I was doing everything okay, and just do it again, or do a little bit better, and it'll be a little bit cuter, or be a little more disciplined, and I, and I walk the fight. Or you can have a demon, it can stay with you. you, know, yeah. and, you, and, you, you know, and you, and that's sometimes what happens to the night before the fight. You just wake up and think, oh, I just want the guy knocked me out. So you know, it's, you know and, that, and and again, you, you've got to have a real self belief and real self confidence that, you know, whatever he did, it was just a blip. How much? Will that play on Dillian White's mind? Do you think? I mean, it, it didn't. It didn't play on his mind after AJ. AJ, he had an up and downer with AJ, and it, it obviously, um, you know, cost him a little bit uh, in terms of his progression. But it didn't seem to make him gun shy or cause him long term problems. I wonder if there's any worry that it could, could, you know, if it could play on his mind this time. It doesn't strike me as that sort of guy. Dillian, it doesn't strike me. It doesn't strike me like that either. I think he's, he's, he's very much. Well, I'm in a fight. If I get knocked out. I get knocked out. That's what happens. Yeah, this is the game. But it might do because. The AJ fight was different. It was a different stoppage and knockout for the start, and and also he was in the, he was in with the guy who was who was touted as the, as the favourite and was a guy on his way up. As, you know, in, he they were both on their way up, but AJ was the you know, was the, 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 the heir apparent, which proved to be true. But here he's boxing. I know the guys with loads of pedigree. This is a guy on his way on his way out of the sport. You would feel. So and until he went in, you know, the massive favourite. So that, that it can have an effect. Can you break this down for us? What we're seeing here? Just is there any sort of intricacies that um, that someone like me that never learned the, the di discipline of the sport, that just in terms of footwork and positioning? What they're doing? They're getting, they're getting the work off the off the jab and then everything. Oh, not at all the hooks, but what they're doing? They're getting the move his head as he moves forward. So every every time he throws a shot, he's moving the head. So the, the, the guy's taking the shot on the pads. Then he's throwing straight away, and that just makes that's a good habit. We, I say it all the time: is what you do after the punch is almost as important as, what you, as, as the punch itself. Because you know, if you just throw a good shot, unless it knocks you out, you're there to get hit back. So you have to always move your feet, move your head, dip down, or whatever. And Povetkin is a guy who isn't even the fastest of guys, but he's actually he's not the fastest of guys, but he closes the distance really quick. It's yeah, a I was going to say he's, yeah, he's, he's not a, got a, slow he's a, feet he's though. A, he's he? what I they mean... call a glider. A glider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he gets in. He gets into you because he because he, he'll step with the with the jab. That's what makes him strong. You see here, he steps with the jab. That's what makes him strong. And then he moves his head as well. As he moves his head, the feet are still moving forward. So you don't sort you sort of don't notice that he's that he's nicking. He's stealing your space with that front foot. And then all of a sudden he's on you. What about the left hook? I mean, we kind of um, we did a piece before the first fight about the battle of the left hookers. Um, it is a lovely shot, and he does throw it in a. a, a it's very watchable the way he throws it. Yeah, yeah oh, it's, and it's, it's full of power. With Dillian's, it's a, more of a smooth whipping left hook, which is a fantastic shot of, of its own. For Vekins, it's slightly different. It, it's, it's closer to his body usually. Even when he jumps into it, it, it comes from it, his body. His body always leans over. He flies into it. So it's more of a weighted. It's more of a weighted heavier shot rather than a whipping shot. 
I think it's him on the pads. And he's obviously not going full out now on the pads here for Vekin, but yeah, it's not super speed, but the timing's good. Big old gloves as well. <laughs> gloves, yeah, but the, but the time is good. So every, yeah. every shot is deliberate. There's, there's not a wasted punch. And you find that with a lot of European, Eastern European type fighters, every punch they throw is correct and neat, and, and the economy is usually pretty good. <laughs> I, th I think oh, that, that on stream? Yeah, it probably was on the stream. Yeah, <laughs> well, making you nervous. Could have been worse. Making you nervous when he's landing the left yes, hook. Yeah, I, I don't think. I'd say what I said. I said when he lets his hands go, it makes my bum go. And what I mean by that is, you remember that night in the garden. You said you, know, it, you felt like you were in a dream. <laughs> it was like well, we were watching it, and, and Bellew came over to me and he said, "It'll be over this round." And, and it happened. And you know when you just. I just, yeah. was, I couldn't, I couldn't, I sort of squinched my eyes and thought, have I, has that just happened? It's and surreal, you remember the noise. It's surreal. And they're, oh, you know, and they're about five or six Russians going, yes, Alex, <laughs> yes. And it was like a moment, wasn't it, when he, when he dips over that front knee, yeah. it almost yeah. like stops. Yeah, yeah, it was. And then like a whip. Then. And how many times have you seen the replay? I mean, I, we I, I mean if I shut my eyes, I can see it frame exactly, by frame exactly. now. Okay, I'm going to leave you to uh, Max from World of Boxing. He's going to help me translate. Max, it's just one question for Alexander. Alex Alexander, Sasha, thank you for joining us. Now you're here, how excited are you to get going and how confident are you that it will be repeat on Saturday? Очень рад тебя здесь видеть. Добро пожаловать, что приехал. Спасибо. Насколько ты уверен, что удастся повторить успех первого боя? Ну, скажи, я тоже рад всех видеть здесь. Мне очень приятно находиться в этой стране. Здесь любят бокс. Любят хороший бокс. Так что надо. Я, конечно, рад находиться здесь и рад, что состоится бой. Как он состоится, знаете, я уже забыл про то, что было. Сейчас самое главное, хорошо, я уже подошел к этому бою, войти в него, можно сказать, и провести отличную комбинацию и сделать хороший бой. Well, first of all, um, very glad to be here, you know, in this uh, uh, special country, let's say. Uh, regarding the, you know, repeat, uh, what I've been in the first fight, I'm not looking for that. This is a, you know, story that we forgot. We're going to, to another fight, you know. We'll try to do my best, you know, in this fight, but don't want to predict. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us. Go well. Thank you. Okay. People can't see what's going on there. Very nearly started interviewing the wrong person. It's I'm the sorry. Craziest place in there, yeah. It was, there's people walking around. There's loads of Russians walking around with cup, cups of coffee. I'll yeah. be top of a boat. Threw me completely there. Yeah, Barry, we can stand in now. We've got a little bit of an empty time. Barry, I'll stand you in here just a little bit further back. Um, what do you make of uh, his demeanour there? He says, I don't want to predict. <laughs> it's a shame for us. I want to hear what he, what he thinks is going to happen. But um, what do you reckon? Well, who do I think is going to win? No, what do you reckon to what oh, we just oh, saw and, and his answer there? <laughs> Again, it's the, the whole demeanour. It's just like, yeah, not, everything's no problem. There's no problem. That's, that's, everything's easy. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just, just enjoy yourself. He's fully confident, but he also, though, I think Dillian's obviously put him down a couple of times. I don't think, they, as, as Eddie Hearn was saying, they were really heavy knockdowns, but he felt the power of Dillian White, so he's going to be wary of, of that himself, of course. But I, but I still think that, you know, that Pavek is a danger. You have to be, you know, you have to be just very structured. You have to be very precise what you're doing. Just don't let him, I keep saying the same thing, but I, I just so just adamant that you just don't let him close. And with that, it's a solid jab. And with, and with Hell Knight in your corner, you know, if they've had enough time to work and, and delay might help that, that's the shot that, that'll win it for him. With Vekin, he did try and land that shot. Yeah. I think it was in the round before or certainly uh, in one of the earlier Dankula. rounds. When you know that you can knock someone out with that shot, will he be thinking, that's the shot I need to concentrate yeah, on? Or has he been around the block so many times that he knows, look, it's not going to be about one shot? Again, I, I, I spoke about the Russian, especially Russian fighters being so economical. He'll want only, he'll only start a shot if it's there. So you, so you know you'll, go, you'll want it and you'll try and set it up. He won't do what maybe like I would do and just go for it really early like a lunatic. There's, 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 there's the gap, I'll go for it and take a risk. You'll only go when the, when the opportunity's there. So you'll still want to do the same things, hit you with a jab, move the head fast and nick his, nick, nick his space with the feet to get close. That's what you'll try and do. And it's Dillian's job to stop him from doing that. Dillian White obviously has added to his training team, gone away and, and knows that he has to be better. Can Pavetkin at... 41 still improve can he be better or do we know what we're going to get 
I don't think he'd get any better. I don't. I, I st- again, I, I still think that his feet are slower than, than they once were. I still think his hands are slower than they once were. I still think that. I, I do. But he's still dangerous because he got that he got that movement of the dipping over the left foot, and he can still punch, of course. So, but I don't think he, ever, he can improve. But does he need to? You know, if he wants to launch, he can land that shot. I think what what he showed is. He's dangerous until he's out of there. Until until the final bell's gone or he's knocked him out, he's dangerous. And you have to and Dillian now has to give him that respect. You know Dillian's got to be wants to be aggressive. He wants to go out there and make a statement and he thinks he should have got him out there in the round before and he wouldn't have got knocked out. He might have got knocked out the round before, who knows? I I think if he's I think if he's more structured with his work, Dillian, and uses a solid jab, he can get a stoppage, but but it might it might take a little bit longer. He's a bit lazy sometimes when we say it, but but I think the reason that people were ad- almost addicted to boxing, particularly heavyweight boxing, is one shot can change it. That was the ultimate equaliser. Um, and Eddie Hearn was just saying there that, you know, the fight was gone. Bellew had come over to him and said, this is over. And I think they felt like, most of us felt like the fight was over. It just, it makes it unmissable that sh- yeah. that it can change like that in a heartbeat. Well, that's, that's literally, that, that's, that's the seller, isn't it? They just show that video all the time. Not just selling this fight, but selling heavyweight boxing. Yeah. You know, this is what can happen. You can have you can have ten rounds of hugging, and then all of, and then all of a sudden then you just get one fantastic shot, and the fight's over with, and that's how it works. One of my good friends in boxing is going to join you here. Yeah. Hey, in fact, you two wanted to meet each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were separated on the podcast. On the podcast, yeah. Talking, talking oh, podcast. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's Barry's a long never... fall. It's a long <laughs> fall. Yeah. Alan, the Savage Babbage, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, welcome to Gibraltar. Uh, how happy are you to be here? And I'm sure you're super excited to watch Dillian White hopefully get revenge. Well, I'm I'm mind blown again. You know, every time I came on these matchroom shows, I'm just like a little kid. You know, just like a little fan girl or something like that. So uh, I'm very very happy to be here and. I'm going to send all my energy to Dillian and I hope he gets a beautiful victory. How is injury rehab going? Um, just explain, you had an operation, was it on your left shoulder or your right? right? Operation on your right shoulder and was that an injury that you picked up um, in training or in the fight itself and how's it uh, sort of healing up? Yeah, it was actually in the first round of the little fight and I can feel it snap because I had a pretty busy schedule. I did six fights in one year. It was all one after another. It's too much stress for the body. I could handle it, I could handle much more, but my body just said, you know, F you and just went into a little hibernating mode, you know. And it snapped in the first round actually and I felt it, it stings. So I just keep pushing through it, you know, for my fans, for my army of savages, I can never, you know, quit and stuff like that. So after the fight, it was a severe pain. And then I went two months just training, I didn't want to go to the doctor. I don't know why, you know, it wasn't smart, so I just delayed two, two months of... Uh, surgery but it's good now it's good when will you be back well i believe i'm going to be back in may you know everybody keep asking that and thank you all for that and you're just giving me strength you know without without you i wouldn't be back in one year it was a pretty big surgery you know because uh, right after i tear out those ligaments and i keep on doing i don't know uh, deadlifts and stuff and it just keeps uh, uh, breaking everything about it so it was a pretty big surgery but it's good now can i just ask you about the fight um, Povetkin White won where were you were you watching at home uh, of course no, you box on the undercard you're watching in the dressing room stupid me uh, we, did you come out and watch the fight ringside or were you yeah of course did, did, were you allowed ringside or were you taken back to the hotel well I wasn't allowed but I was there yeah this is why I'm getting confused because <laughs> I know you weren't there well you shouldn't have been there yeah, but you were yeah, yeah yeah I shouldn't be there but of course I was there to, with my man I was watching for the woods you know we had some <laughs> Yeah, the corner has a lot of forest, you know. Yeah. So I, 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 had, I was behind the tree. Nah, no, kidding. I was, I was a little bit back, but I was there, almost ringside, and I was just, it just like I took a shot, you know, because I connect with Dillian and I connect with all my friends, especially Dillian, who is my mentor, who, who has shown me the world, you know. So it was a pretty big, pretty big punch for me also. You know? But I know he's gonna go. I knew it. I said, uh, I said there, Dillian looked better than Povetkin after that fight. So that gave me the confidence he's going to go back really soon. And he was back training in like one week. Yeah. So You haven't had the chance to be in camp with him this time round. Um, obviously, you've done hundreds of rounds of sparring with him. He still says you're the most vicious, spiteful sparring partner that he uses. Um, what does he have to do differently in this one? Well, I, like I told him the last time, I think it's still the same. He got to go to being his old self, you know, to bring back the young Dillian. You know, he was a killer. 
I, know, I, I liked watching the young Dylan so much. But last few fights, uh, the Rivas fight, uh, the Povetkin fight, he kind of took it down a notch. You know, I don't like that. He, he tried to, to box too much. And he's really a puncher. He's a big puncher. You know, and I said, don't box, don't box with Olympic champion. You don't do that. You know, I'm not going to box with Olympic champion ever. I'm going to destroy them. So that's the, that is Dillian's way. You know, he's the best at it. And when he tries to box, use the jabs and everything, it's not him fully, you know. So I really hope he's going to go back or he old ways. That's why he has so many fans. That's what he did all this, you know, so. And if he does do that, do you think that he wins this fight by stoppage this time? Of course, of course. I, there is no doubt in my mind, you know. If, even if he doesn't, it, I'm still going to think he, he's a stronger, better. I, I, don't, I can't say better boxer, but a better fighter. You know? He's just a fighter to the core. You, know, the, the, you can see Dillian, the way he walks, he walks like a boxer. He, he runs like a boxer. He, everything he does is pure boxing. You know? And I just want him to use that, you know? not, not to pretend to be somebody else. You know? I want him to use that, the savagery. You know? he's, he's savage. He's a true savage. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for coming on uh, and joining us. Uh, great to see you again. Um, Barry, you should give. <laughs> Barry, you survived. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's gone. Yeah, well, I somehow forgot that he knocked out Sean Dell Winters on the undercard. Uh, assume that he was back just, at home. Just I a taller version than me, isn't he? Really? Give up. I thought I'd seen double. I mean, same, we've all been awake a long same time. Ac same accent. <laughs> Both big punches, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. Stop it now. Um, That's interesting. What he said, though, like play to your strengths. Your strength is to be super aggressive and. You don't necessarily agree. I, I, I do. You can't reinvent the wheel, so you, you know you you got to work with it in, in the constraints of what you have. Of course, I understand that, but not just going. I'm a fighter. That's what I do. That that's that's naive at the highest level. That's just really naive, because you know you're going to walk. You someone like Pavekin, you just walk into a shot, and it'd be an early night for him. So I think you know, I'm not saying you can't be aggressive and try and get Pavekin out there early. Possibly, I I would be a bit more cautious than that, but I can still understand that you know that. You, you, you use what you've got, but you've got to use. You've got to engage your brain. Yeah. And I, I don't keep saying the same thing, but I, I, it's so important. Do you want to end of the jab, Dillian, please? I just wonder if he will. I just when you go into it's, it's not just a rematch. It's an immediate rematch, and it's in a rematch with a fight that you were winning, and eventually you got knocked out in. I just wonder what his mindset will be when the first bell rings. If he can control that, if he can realise, you know. Again, I go back to what Alan Badrich was saying there and what you were saying. He may well be winning it on the jab, but there's always that in his mind that Povetkin is, until he's out, he's out. You know, he's dangerous. Of course, yeah, the, the cost is, but the whole thing about the jab is you, you're making Povetkin uh, no, to try and attack from too far out. That's what you want to try and do. That, that's, the, that's the idea of it all. Not, uh, not. I can ask you to step aside because uh, the body snatcher is in the building and I'll probably ask him about the haircut. Um, a lot of people say online, like, you know he means business when he takes all the hair off. It's like, <laughs> very haggler, isn't it? I know, um, I, know I was going to say, an older haggler there. Looking good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the open workout continues. And right now, making his way to the ring, the former WBC This is the full squad. This is everybody. Harold Knight with the cronk bag. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Xavier Miller, who I think will probably lead the corner. I think it will be Miller leading the corner with Harold Knight um, assisting. I will, I'll try and clarify that. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't, I'm I would, not sure. I don't I, know. I, I wouldn't. You know, I, I wouldn't say there was anything wrong with that. I, I think you know, Miller knows him better than anyone. But I, I would also say, what's the point in getting Harold Knight in if you're not going to use him to his full capability? Yeah, I, very I would, true. I would have thought. I wouldn't have said but they'll decide what they decide, of course. Unless he was in especially for certain things, maybe they were using that they solid jab. They described themselves as, the t as a team um, when we interviewed Harold on the podcast. Very clear uh, to say, you know, we're a team, Xavier Miller and myself. So I just wonder who will, who will be on paper the lead corner man. I'll see if we can find that out. That is the Gibraltar rugby kit that Dillian White is wearing. I know he's been very, very well received here. Um, he's had a lot of commitments meeting local um, politicians, dignitaries, supporters. Um, and that's a nice touch there to wear the Gibraltar rugby kit. Imagine him playing rugby, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wouldn't be so big, though, would he? Let's be honest. No, maybe. maybe. But, but I think, I think the, 
I think the aggressiveness that he has, so that approach, I think, then, and his, to want to get into a chair, that would, be, would, would do well for him. I quite like the fact, um, I, I like it when he when he's unhappy on fight week because it, it sort of shows when he's grumpy because it shows you know, yeah. maybe last time he was in you know he was comfortable he was the star it was a fight he was expected to win he's just complaining about the music about the playlist <laughs> so this music is rubbish this isn't the one but I also like him relax I think you know, it's just, just the way the way he is you know, he's very much well this is what it is you know, this is the way I do it. He has, he wants, he wants to have his own way, and and also, you know, he's he's up for a fight, isn't he? That's that. I think he's just generally he's one of these one of these fellows who just wants to have a fight. And I think and whatever he gets paid for this is just a huge bonus. But I think whatever discipline he chose to fight in, I know, I, can't, I think he did Muay Thai and some ki certainly the kickboxing stuff I've seen, just so effective. Whatever discipline he chose, he would have been effective. Just a born fighter. Um, we're lucky that he's chosen boxing. This is big, isn't it? Now he's here, and now we've got all the surroundings here. That that, that team, pretty much, because of the coronavirus and pandemic lockdown, they've been in camp since the last fight. They've all had Christmas away from their families, been all holed up in Portugal as one big team. It's a big deal for these guys. It's, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It feels big now we're here, I have to say. It is, I, but I think, you know, for Dillian especially, I think that the, the postponements and the, and the, you know, it's taking longer to, to make, can, you know, with, a new, with a new guy in your corner, can only be help. You know, if they had a plan what they're looking for they got him in to do a certain thing the longer he's got to implement that discipline whatever it was would be would obviously you know it's, be, it's better for you so you know and also he's a younger man as well we've got to let's not forget that you know if every week that goes by he's not going to be a helper yeah. for, for, for Megan of course so yeah I think it's it, it should help Dillian and also it gives him time for mentally and, you know and, and emotionally get a, get his head around the, what happened in the last fight and how he's going to approach this one as well and we're talking generic here because we don't know what's in Tyson's head because you know, no, no, no. he looks like his whole persona is he doesn't really care. I got knocked out. Well, I said I'll fight you tomorrow if you want. He seems like he seems like that sort of kid. Zavi Miller was wearing a gum. Is he wearing? Is that a gum shield? He's wearing a, <laughs> a, a very sensible. I just saw that then. I was just making sure he wasn't chewing a sweet or something. So Zavi Miller is wearing a gum shield for the pad session. Very sensible. Uh, <laughs> You wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to call a jab, and he thinks you say right, right hand yeah, on course, top of the yeah. boat. I've seen it. I've seen it. No, I've seen it. I've, I've seen, seen, seen it, it numerous times. times. Andy Ruiz. There's a clip of Andy Ruiz hitting his old pad man in the middle of a pad session. Oh, I've and seen it. Yeah. Unbelievable. So yeah, I don't blame Xavier Miller. My father got his tooth knocked to his lip on a pad session. On a pad session with a friend of mine. Yeah. When you say a friend of mine, was it you? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. No, it was me. He would have been all right, wouldn't he? <laughs> you always put yourself down. Barely a bruise, but yeah, yeah. So it can be. Yeah. I don't know why the fans are today. Though. I don't think they're going to be doing much, are they? No, but it is always interesting to see how seriously people take these because, yeah. you know, if it were me, I'd, and I was orthodox, I'd come out and box Southpaw and miss the pads and make them <laughs> yeah, 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 because yeah. you know everybody's watching for that precise reason. But, but he is gonna, I think he, I think he is going to do a bit here. I think he is going to show us one or two things. Maybe not. You know, I, I think nah, you know, I'm getting carried why, away. Why, but why, I think why, he, why would he? You know, I understand he's here to people to see him and stuff, but you know, we're going to doing anything silly now do you make any silly mistakes getting hurt an injury or something you know talk about um, if if it's a small word with a very big meaning yeah. but when is the right time for him to put his foot down because what he said last time was he he went too early and I, ho I heard Mark Tibbs former trainer saying I'd ne I wouldn't have let him make that mistake until Povetkin was absolutely done and he, and he wasn't quite done I just wonder this time will he know internally when the right time is can you ever really know when the right time is to put the foot down but the thing is he didn't get knocked out straight after the knockdown did he you know, there was a whole minute's rest there and, 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 and he went again so you know, we, you know, I, if, you, if, if you've heard the guy you've got to go for it I understand that but it's, it's how you go for it he doesn't need to get too close and, and that's, that's the thing he doesn't need to get too close to you know, if you get close if Povetkin can, I'm just saying the same thing repeating myself it's ridiculous but it's true if you get close Povetkin you know, with a shorter reach by a, by a fair distance can hit you with that left uppercut that left hook or the overhand right if you, you can go you can keep it long and you can still hurt him he can knock him out with a long right hand will he be content to win this fight on points I mean winning is all that matters it's very easy not. for me to uh, say he, that he, but he, he I wonder if your ego is hurt if you, if you, you know if your reputation is hurt coming back does he want to equal this I don't know if he's a good enough boxer to beat him on points to be honest or out and out boxer Dillian no he can box a bit but I mean no, he's not known for his for his 
his boxing skills, he's known for his you know, his aggressiveness and his power. But so even though he's winning that, uh, the other fight, but as the rounds went on, you know, if he started getting tired and settling down, you would just, the natural the bit of boxing ability of Povetkin probably would have shown through. They was going to go the distance, possibly. So I think you know he's always going to look for the stoppage. He's always going to want to hurt him. But if he keeps it from distance and does it that way, and he can get close, but you got to, if you're going to get close, throw one or two shots. Don't get too greedy. But then you've got to move. You've got to take a different angle out before you re-engage. I think it's that that much. Well, I think you got you got you got to really use his brain to, um, Saturday night, Julian. One thing we haven't touched on at all is um, the route to the top for the winner. Eddie Hearn's got a bit of a tough job keeping all of his heavyweights happy. Um, you would expect, with all the news that's slowly bleeding through, that AJ and Fury are going to be tied up for two fights now. So if you're Dillian White and you win this, what are you going to do next? And the same, for, same question for Povetkin. But what are you going to do next? He wants to win a world title. What's the quickest route to that? I was going to say, unfortunately, but you, you can literally see that if Chisora beats Parker, they, they have a third fight, don't they? Or, or if Parker beats Chisora, and if, if he beats Chisora in an impressive fashion, then he fights Parker, but there's no world title on the line. And then what do you do with the winner of Usyk and Joyce? Do they fight? But they won't fight each other because they're going to want a world title. Unless, yeah, unless it's, that, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. A, if all the belts are tied up, I, the, the thing is, though, they won't be tied. The belts won't be tied up for two fights. Will they? They'll be tied up for the first fight, and then the second fight, the belts will be fragmented. They'd have to. They can. Mm. They can hold. I don't know. You can hold a, hold all those organisations ransom, you know, for for for, for, a, for a year or two. I, I, I can't see how it can be possible. So. You think that a world title shot should be looming for one of them, but yeah, until Joshua and Fury get it on, then everyone's having to having to pause on that. But this, but either way, there's loads of money to be earned for them, and there's still there's still big fights around that around that division for them. He, but the Fadillion, though, it's hard to see who he'd want to pair from Joshua or Fury. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Who else who else is he going to want to fight? I, no, really. No, De- Deontay Wilder, I forgot all about him. Remember him? <laughs> well, Wilder. Yeah. No, and there, there's a fight. There's a, and that's a fantastic fight for him. That's a fight that he can go across the pond for. Probably it would be an ambition for every, most boxers, isn't it, to want to box Well, the fan, the fan in me would love to see that. Would absolutely love to see that. And, that, and that's a dangerous fight because, you know, the, the way Dillian fights, would, he'll give, he'll give um, Deontay Wilder lots of opportunities to land with that huge right hand of his. So, but also, didn't get inside that long reach of Deontay Wilder. He tears him apart. That's that's for sure. So it's a good fight. But it's, who cares about that? I think if anything, you can't blame that on the first fight. But Pebeki was overlooked by us all. By all. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the whole story, the old narrative of the thing was how hundred odd days or whatever, or whatever, four, three hundred days, whatever he was. For, was it three hundred and something odd days? He, he, he was he was the number one challenger for the WBC title. Yeah, yeah longer, get, I think. And couldn't get his opportunity, so you know, like the, that was a narrative, and this was a, a, a really risky fight for him, but a fight that he'll come through, and then he'll force Wilder, uh, uh, Fury, or, or, and Joshua to fight him. Really interesting, uh, uh, Barry. I'll ask you the question in case Dylan doesn't come over straight away, but I might have to cut you off. Um, really interesting what Eddie said. Look, he wanted to fight in front of fans. He feels like he needs the fans. I just, I still think we've got so accustomed to no fans. Um, yeah. We take it as a given what it actually means. Even that thousand against um, the, the thousand that were in there for AJ Pulev, it just made such a difference. I couldn't put into words the difference it made. Well, it can give you that extra little spur on, can it, when you're getting tired or, or you know, or it can keep your feet grounded. You know, you get hit with a big shot, then it goes, ooh. Mm. You know, with, with, that, with that deadly silence, it can feel like a spanning session, you're moving on, switched on. So, yeah, so of I course, think, it's important. I think Dillian is going to go straight to our colleagues on Scott Sports News. That's fine. It's. Uh, la- Luck- luckily I've got uh, Barry to help me <laughs> oh, yeah thanks I would like to get to Harold uh, I'd like to get to Harold as well but uh, we can stay on this is the last this is the last fighter to work out so we're, what are we at quarter past seven I think uh, I think I think Dillian's got um, commitments down uh, with the football tonight as well uh, going down to Gibraltar Norway uh, so I don't think he's going to ha- hang around too much but um Harold Shadow Knight, also in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just have a quick chat on Harold Knight. Uh, sorry, we're just we're, we're feeling very briefly here. Harold, just one. What Harold and Xavier? In fact, let's bring the two trainers good, in together. Good, good. 
Guys, we're live on our stream here on Sky Sports News. Just one quick word from the two of you. Um, he seems in good spirits. Just how confident are you as a team that this is going to be revenge on Saturday? Not only revenge, but redemption. We worked hard. We was in camp for over 20 weeks. The hard, One thing with Dillian, he's one of the hardest working uh, fighters that I've worked with. So we're definitely prepared. Xavier, what about this uh, gum shield? Hey, Very listen, sensible. <laughs> listen, when you're training the heavyweight, you have to be careful. I like my teeth. But, you know, he's been honest. He's just, this camp's been, been absolutely amazing. Uh, Dillian always trains really hard and, um, you know, expect an explosive performance. What's his mindset? You know, he seems in a good place, but he also seems that bit narky as well that you kind of oh, want, you know, a bit, a bit of grump as well. But you, got, you guys have been around Dillian long enough. You know what it's like. Yeah. Fight, fight week, you know, we just, we listen, it's been a long camp. We just want to get in there and do the business. What about you guys? You've been away from home a hell of a long time. And I th yeah, I don't think people realise the sacrifices that you've had to make as well. A hold up in Portugal. Xavier, you, I think, a little bit longer than Harold. Yeah. You've been there since November, uh, October, yeah, November. October, yeah, that is yeah. a huge sacrifice for, for you guys as well. Um, it will mean a lot to both of you yeah. if, he, if he gets the job done. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're soldiers. I mean, once again, we're, we're, we're in war. We're prepared for war and uh, we're going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, yep. thank you very much for joining us. Dylan, great to see you. Uh, what's your mindset at the moment? You must be absolutely buzzing with this backdrop, but also now fight week's here. It's been a long time coming for you. I'm good, man. I'm chilled. I'm relaxed. You know, I'm, I'm one of those kind of guys where it takes a lot to knock me up my roof, man. I'm, I'm easy, so I'm saying I'm easy, you know. Friday, I'm all business. Saturday, I'm all business, I mean, you know, but I'm good, I'm relaxed, I'm chilled. I'm not overthinking stuff and thinking, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. I trust the training, the process. And I know who I am as a fighter, you know, I know who I am as a person. Things I've come back from in life and done, this is nothing. This is just, it's a fight, you win, you lose. So what? The main thing is I try and fight the best people, I try and be the best I can, and I don't hide from nobody. No one can say, oh, you avoided him, you avoided him. So don't really care, to be honest. They say timing is everything. You've mm. been in, I was just saying to um, the guys there, Xavier and Howard, um, uh, and Harold, that uh, you've been in camp a hell of a long time. Mm. Is, is time in everything? You feel that this is the right time now, Saturday? You've had, you've, had, you've had enough, but you haven't had too much. I was ready to go in November. I was already ready. So, you know, we had to break the camp down, rest, relax some days, bring it back up again. But, you know, it is good. You know, my, my team's good. I've got good team people, very experienced people, very smart people. And I've been around a long time. I've learned a lot. You know, I'm still learning. I learn a lot. So I know when to say, you know what, I ain't going to gym today. I'm relaxing in my house. You know what I mean? And it is what it is. I don't care who thinks whatever. You know, what I say, I, I don't really care about what people say I think, man. I just do what feels right to me, you know? Eddie Hearn said the discussions that you had in the build-up to the fight, mm. the fans mean so much to you. The fact, one of the main reasons we're here is because you get to fight in front of a crowd. Just how much um, of a difference will that make? It would be, it'd be like, you know what it is? For me, I'm just going to play my part in help getting us back to normality, trying get some fans back to sports, trying you know, show people, set an example that we can get back to normal if we take the right safety procedures and everybody do what they need to do and everybody is safe, you know what I mean? And Gibraltar is leading the charge of this, showing us, England and the rest of the world, that we can return to normality. We just have to just take the proper precautions, you know? Obviously, they've inoculated over 90-something percent of the, the, the population, so why can't we do the same in England and get sports back? And, because a lot of boxers... Boxing is their job, if, and they ain't boxed for like over a year. A lot of these guys are giving up their career, losing their money. A lot of people is going a bit crazy and stuff. So we just need to get back, put the small shows on, because the small shows is the grassroots for 90% of the boxers in England and in the world. You know, it's only a 10% that gets on the big shows, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, just finally, before we go, loads of comments online on our online streams, and it's, it's a bit of a light-hearted light, light question, but... A lot of people saying you mean business when you take all the hair off, when you go full Marvin Hagler, uh, that you know that you mean business. Uh, I just, I've been in camp for so long looking like a, a, I can't got no family. So I just thought, you know what? All the hard work's done. Let me just fresh up and just come in Saturday a bit. Just feel a bit, a haircut make you feel a bit fresh. You give that little bounce, you know what I mean? And you know me, um, shrimp my head bald sometimes depending on my mood, you know what I mean? I'm just getting ready for later on when I go bald, just checking out the look from early, you know what I mean? Very, See if it suits me. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. Just find a look. Um, yes, there's going to be a crowd there, but there are a hell of a lot of fans that will have wanted to come that can't. You've got to make yes. sure everyone back home. Thank you guys for the support. I love you guys. Keep supporting, and we're going to get the victory Saturday, and then hopefully put on another show, possibly here or possibly in England or in America. A big show. You know, a big show and get some big fans hopefully fighting for the world title. But let's see, one fight at a time, Pavic is dangerous and I'm um, fully focused. I'm looking forward to get the job done and knock him out Saturday. Best of luck, go well. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Thank you.
Barry, good. Uh, just stand you anyway. We'll go. We'll, we might as well go full circle. Let's go all the way around. Um, saying all the right things uh, in a very good mood, I think, but uh, but ticking as well. Was, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, you can see just see something, can you? A little glint there that he's still. Yeah, uh, in the next day or two, I think be, it'll change dramatically. Yeah. But, but I, he's, he's, I think he's quite philosophical about it all. About his whole, about the whole, his whole approach to boxing is a bit like, well, what, what are we here to do? We're here to fight. We'll have a fight. You know, and, and, and I think when he does get beat, even the Joshua lost, you know, he, he, some things he wasn't happy about, he just got, you know, you know, I went in there trying to knock him out and it, and it didn't work. And, and, but you know, if I get him again, I'll beat him again. He was all like that, but he was very much, and that's how it is. Can I ask you just to sum up, obviously it's been a long stream. If you stayed with us, thank you very much. Everything that you've seen, but particularly now you've, had eyes on them on the final fight week, both Povetkin and White. Changed any of your opinions? Anything of note that stood out to you? No, nothing. I wouldn't have changed. I wouldn't change my opinion. They both look confident, and right, for both different reasons, but rightly so. But I, I also think that you know, for me, it's it's what it's what um, Dillian White has to do or has to not do. That will be the difference in this fight. And the Povetkin still dangerous, and but he, you know, I can't see him getting any better than what he is. To be honest, I think Dillian could improve, and if they've done the work in the gym. And the things I'm not going to keep saying the same thing again. But if you've been watching from the beginning, you've been fed up with it. But <laughs> if he if he does that, if he, I think if he does that a little bit, I think it'll, it'll be an easier night for him. Barry, thank you so much for uh, being part of this media stream. Um, that concludes tonight's media workouts. Um, Rumble on the Rock. Make sure you join us tomorrow, wherever you consume this stream today. Come back tomorrow. Sending your questions, we'll try and get through them. Two o'clock is the press conference UK time. Come and join us then. The Rumble on the Rock. We are here in Gibraltar.